Today, I've got some essential advice for beginners and people new to Luminar Neo, which I think you've got to hear. This is going to help you avoid making mistakes going forward and really set you off on the right path photo editing in Luminar Neo. My name is Ben from Ben's Guide. It's great to have you here at the video today. And if you like photo editing and photography, why not join our friendly community here at Ben's Guide? Just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Let's get right into it, guys. So first off, the first bit of advice I wanna share with you is one of the most important. That is to know who you are and what you want to achieve. So what does this mean? Well, there are a few different kinds of photo editors out there. So if you're new to photo editing and you don't really know much about it, you don't wanna spend lots of time photo editing, then you're someone which is going to be completely different to a photo editor which has lots of experience and has been doing it for many years. So for instance, if you're new, you may just want to use a tool like Enhance AI. This is a brilliant tool where you can use the slider and the AI will actually make the changes for you. You can then look at this and decide if this is the kind of change that you want. It's brilliant because you can then control the power or the intensity of this just by bringing the slider up and down. And then when you've finished, you can also enhance the sky to bring some details in there. But this is really good for people who are new to the software and people who just want to get a quick result, put it out there on their social media, and they're happy with that. If you're the person who has more experience though, then the Enhance AI tool is probably not going to be for you. Maybe you've got the time to do the photo editing. You've got the experience. So then you can start applying this with the whole host of tools that Luminar Neo has available. So you can start going into the Develop tab and making the changes yourself. You can start bringing up the shadows, bringing down the highlights depending on the image and affecting things like the contrast. So it's really important to know the kind of editor that you are in the process and also know the kind of desired result that you want to achieve. And from there, you can really start off on the right foot making the right edits. You'll hear lots in advice given that it's very important for you to start um, affecting things in your image, like the exposure, getting the, the light and the dark correct to start with. And though that's really good advice in a lot of instances. It's not always correct. So my advice actually is it doesn't matter where you start. You just need to refer back to the first bit of advice to know who you are and what you want to achieve. So for instance, in this photo, it's underexposed in the buildings and we've got a little bit too much light over here in the sky. How do I know that? Well, if I look at my histogram and then I go onto the point here and click on it, it's going to show me the areas which are clipping or overexposed. Now I can make the desired changes to this or the necessary ones by bringing the highlights down and then really making sure they're within the right limits. So I can't actually bring back all of the detail here, but I could lower the exposure and then that would bring it within the parameters that I want. But the information here is there's an image which needs quite a few changes making to it. I also want to bring up the shadow detail. Now I've made the changes there. So we've got more detail that can be seen in the buildings. Now it's a little bit flat. So I want to make a bit of a change to the contrast in the image and then just bring a bit more contrast, separating the light and the dark. Now this is the kind of image which really benefits from quite a few changes and starting off, like we said at the start, which is in the develop tab, changing things like exposure. But what happens if we have a different kind of image? Now this is a photo straight out of camera. Now what I can see with this photo is it looks almost perfect to start with. So I don't want to make any changes to the exposure in this image. And because of that, I don't need to start off in the Essentials tab affecting things like light. Actually, this photo is pretty much exactly where I want it. So the only change I want to make is probably just to put a little LUT on it, just to make it a little bit more crunchy and bring out a bit more vibrancy. To do that, I would just go into the mood section where you can choose from some of the LUTs inside Luminonio, and then I could choose a LUT 
which I would think that would match it. So I'm gonna go for Santa Barbara, click on that change, and just with that intensity there, I actually really like the way that looks. So I've made one change inside the Creative tab, and I have completely skipped the Light and Exposure, which you would find in the Essentials tab. So it doesn't matter where you start. And what I mean by that is you don't always have to start in the Essentials tab making changes to the light. You need to know the required result that you're looking for with your photo. And some images will need less editing and some images will need more. So always look at your photo to get the desired result that you need. One of the biggest mistakes to avoid as a beginner is not to over edit. Now, of course, it's up to you what desired results you want to achieve. You're the person that has the control and has the ability to be creative and that's the way it should be. But sometimes over editing, if you're following the rules, can really stand out and it can actually make you look a bit like a beginner. It's where we all go horribly wrong at the start, over editing images and making them look just a bit too much and rather than toning it back and making them look exactly what people would look at and think, oh, that looks good. So it would be very easy to go into this image, which is very nice already, and start making some drastic changes. With those drastic changes, ruin the photo. For instance, I could see here that we've got this lovely backlit kind of glow here, which is nice and orange, and it's lighting up a hair, and it just looks fantastic. But it would be so easy for me to just go into one of these tools like color, push up the temperature, and then make it look like this. Now, some people might look at this and go, oh, that looks really nice. But the reality of the situation is it just looks a bit overbaked. You see, if we were to bring it back and then just push it up a little bit, we've got such a beautiful, more natural looking photo just by increasing that temperature a little bit. And there are other changes, more refined changes that we could make and then affect the image in a better way. And then always use this eye down here, the preview, because then you can refer back to the, the original image to see the changes you've made. And that will be a really good base for you to know exactly how far you've gone and know exactly where you should go. If you're a beginner or you're new to Luminar Neo, you might be wondering how you can get the most from this software. In fact, this might be one of the most important questions that you want answered. Now, the great thing about Luminar Neo is it's really easy to get to grips with. There's not a long learning curve. You can jump into the tools and pretty much start making changes straight away. Now, there are lots of tools which you can use inside Luminar Neo to get great results, especially using some of the fantastic tools on offer inside the AI tools. So just by using things like Sky AI, you can grab another sky and completely transform the look of your image. So just by pushing this sky in here, we can see that we create a different look and a different feel just by adding the sky. Then you've got tools inside these tools where you can refine them and make them look more realistic. Things like scene relighting. Now, of course, this is just one example. There are many other tools like Relight AI, Mask AI, and I've made videos on these such tools. So if you want to check these out, there is a card showing now in the top of the video, which will take you to a complete guide on the Mask AI tool, a relatively new tool that's come out really good, and it will really help you get to grips further editing your photos in Luminar Neo. But to get the most out of Luminar Neo, there are two bits of advice that I could give you. First off is you always want to update the software when the new updates are released. There really is no company like Skylum which gives such good comprehensive updates. So you get new tools, new AI tools in these updates. You get bug fixes. You get new features and software add-ons which you can apply and really make big changes to your edits. So it's so important to make sure you update your software when the updates become available. But if you want to know about these new updates and all the features, then you can check out my videos. I'll always be releasing new videos about the new update. So this is something you can check out. Just hit that subscribe button at the notification bell and you'll be first in line to find out all the new features and goodies that you'll get inside the updates. 
Finally, you have something called Luminar X. This is a membership which gives you over 240 creative assets per year. This includes presets, templates, skies, LUTs, overlays, all these kind of things which you can add to your photos to increase the potential and the look of them. There are so many benefits from this. We have a link to this in the description. So if you want to get this Luminar X membership, you can just by clicking on the link there. Finally, my last bit of advice is you need to be having fun. That's right. The reason you got into photo editing and photography in the first place is to enjoy yourself, right? So if you're not doing this and that's not the case, then you're doing something wrong. Don't put pressure on yourself. Don't stress yourself out. Just take your time in the learning process and enjoy it. And then you will have fun when you're editing inside Luminar Neo. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this helpful little video which I've put out today for people which are new to Luminar Neo or just getting started. Now remember, there is a summer sale on for anyone which hasn't got this software yet where you can get up to 40% off. It's the biggest sale on Luminar Neo so far. And if you're interested, the link to that is in the description. Finally, I just want to say whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.